In this short instructional video, we will be looking at some fundamental rope work for scrambling. This will include how we attach ourselves to the rope and how we safeguard ourselves when we move together on scrambling terrain. So when we're scrambling, we'll need a harness and a helmet, and then we'll need to tie onto the end of the rope. And here you can see we're taking some coils to shorten up the rope. The hand is used to measure the length and the rope is flicked around each time, thus keeping the coils the same size. Once you've finished taking in as much rope as you need, pass the rope coils over your shoulder, reach your hand through and pull a bite of rope through and tie it into an overhand knot to stop them from tightening up on you. Take a screw gate carabiner and clip this tail through your rope loop and fasten it then the rope coils won't tighten on you. Then you need to measure out some slack between you and the next climber on the rope. This allows you to move without kicking the person behind you in the face. We're now going to create an isolation loop, which is just an overhand knot in the rope. This allows the middle person a bit of play. We tie a second overhand knot, which we're going to use to retie the rope through. Then pass the tail of the rope through the harness. This will then be fed through the overhand knot. And tied off with a stopper. It's important that there's enough tail coming out of the stopper knot to protect against slippage. And then the third person can tie on with a figure of eight, ensuring there's enough slack between them and the second person. Then the first person can set off up the scramble and on the way looking for suitable places to put in protection. This could be a sling over a block or a placed piece of gear. The rope can then be clipped into it and the person can lead on. Once the rope is tight on the second, they can start climbing. And when they reach the gear, they can unclip in front of them and reclip the rope for the third person behind them and carry on. When the rope is tight again, the third person will climb. When they reach the gear, they clean and store the kit on their harness and continue on. When the lead climber runs out of rope, they can make a stance at the top. In this situation, we've threaded a sling around a block. We're choosing to use an Italian hitch to belay from and a direct belay. It's important that this belay is bomb proof because everything is resting on it. Once the gate is fastened then, we can start to take in the slack and store it at our feet. In this example, the ground is steep both above and below, so we have tied ourselves to an anchor, and we've also put the first person on a belay. As the first person climbs up, again she's going to be looking for anchors and clipping the rope through them to protect both herself and the people following her. You can also use the rope around natural anchors by threading the rope around blocks on your path. This will help snag the rope should someone slip. It's important when you're traveling that you move with the rope in tension both in front of you and behind you and that you keep the rope snaking between those natural anchors when you're passing through them and again, when you're passing behind. So here he's having to pause to allow the person up the step below and also to make sure the rope stays in place to protect the person behind him. Once the gear has been collected by the last person, they can both then move on again. It's important that the slack is kept out of the rope so the third person here has to wait while the rope becomes tight again.
This video is intended to refresh previously learned skills and not replace the need for proper instruction. The skills are complex and require sound judgment and practice in order to be applied appropriately. If you are unsure, please seek further advice.